This is Dr. Chris's Radio of Horror program here in WCW in Worcester, Massachusetts, United States of America. And our guest is calling in from Old England. We are in New England, all the way from across the pond, the pond being the Atlantic Ocean. Jason Miller on the show with us, comic book creator for Death School, an old school horror slasher, 91 page, holy cow, 91 page horror comic in the van of Friday the 13th, Halloween, and My Bloody Valentine, with some cartoony characters, uh, which really hooked me for the book, taking you back to the golden age of horror. Jason's on the show to talk to us about uh, his life as an illustrator and this book. Thank you for coming on the show with us, Jason. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be on the show. Thank you. You are the illustrator for this book. Where did you get your start as an illustrator? Uh, well, I've, I've been drawing as, lo as long as I can remember, really. But um, I kind of really got back into it a few years ago on uh, Bloke's Tomb of Terror, which is like a horror anthology comic, which is actually a British guy that lives in the States. And I just sent him a couple of samples and I was in his horror anthology and um it went from there really what was that book about i'm not familiar with it uh it, it's a bit like the old sort of towels from the crypt uh creepy magazines lots of small 10 page 11 page stories all different different um ideas and concepts i think the first one i did was uh do you want onions on that and it was about uh two brothers who run a kebab van which is like a mobile food wagon and they were killing their punters and feeding them back to the local drunks. So yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Where did you go to art school to learn your craft? Are you uh, is it all? Um, do you draw? What is it called? Freestyle hand, or do you do it all digitally on a pad? Uh, I'm freestyle. I, I do it by hand. Um, I color digitally a lot, as you can see on this comic and other ones I've worked on. Um, but I'm, I'm primarily self-taught. Um, strangely, when I went to university, which is our kind of former college, um, I studied photography and film uh, because a tutor I had before that had convinced me that illustrators are basically worthless and get no money and I'd be in the gutter, so I had to specialise in something else. Uh, so I spent three years making films and taking pictures. And it wasn't until I left um, university that I started getting back into the comic artwork. Have you always gravitated towards the um, the horror genre? Yes. <laughs> um, like my my earliest memories are sitting with a stack of um, 2000 AD and uh, Batman comics and things like that, and just copying panels out of judge dread and rogue trooper and and things like that and, and just then it started to turn from that into putting my own characters in and they gradually got more horror based as i discovered horror movies what was a horror film that really influenced you growing up or a horror comic book as well what any any particular horror comic <clears throat> um horror comics were kind of tough to come by in, in the uk we didn't really kind of have like a, a large selection of like towers from the crypt but probably the the first one i really remember is you could classify it more as sci-fi but we had a run of terminator comics over here um and they were like ready to buy in like any kind of what you guys would call a convenience store and i remember just collecting those avidly and and i was again copying panels of the terminators and things like that and that's kind of where that went from um but when it comes to film, it was actually Nightmare on Elm Street was the, the first horror movie I saw at a very young age of nine. <laughs> when it came out, are you that old or younger? <laughs> I, I, it was a, a VHS copy that my granddad decided to show me to try and get me to go back to bed when I was having a sleepover. And I ended up just falling in love with the idea of Freddy and and the, the nightmare world and things like that and as a kid i always had like a, a really good distinction of what was real and fake so it kind of didn't scare me i kind of almost knew that it was all you know prosthetics and that without actually knowing what prosthetics was at age nine talk about death school and uh this comic book 91 pages is it all fully drawn already 
yeah fully drawn i've even got the proof copy sat on the table next to me now it's all gone to print i've checked all the colors and everything like that it's it's, it's hot to drop um so it, yeah it, it, you said a little bit in the introduction it, it's a throwback to the 1980s uh, it's inspired by uh, friday the 13th my bloody valentine halloween the burning basically it was it's my, my love letter to the golden age of slashers basically um the story revolves around uh the, the killer called edgar wilson um who when he is a child at school uh, the bullies invite him onto the school roof for a party after a Halloween dance um, and they set about bullying him and picking on him and he trips and falls from the roof into a massive vat of glass uh, and they panic and, and leave him for dead basically and agree to never speak of it ever again um, and it's not until the present day comes in the book that he seemingly returns from the grave to seek his revenge on their children are you also the writer on it? I don't see anybody else credited on this besides you. I am a one-man band. I have wrote it. I've created it. I've drawn it. Um, yeah, it, it's completely my baby. Completely creator-owned. Um, you're inking it too? I, I've inked it. I've coloured it. Um, I've lettered it. Yeah, it, it's all me. It's all me. So you're basically just raising the money to print the copies, huh? yes pretty much yeah yeah i just i just want to get it out into the world and have people have that feeling of being in a video rental store on a, on a friday night and just finding an absolutely amazing slasher movie they've never seen before and falling in love with it are you wait so you're also the composer too of the music no no that's the one thing i didn't do that is a, a very good friend of mine who goes by the name of vhs skull on instagram uh he's a huge vhs collector I, i've known him oh, i've got to be about 15 years now and he's always been a musician in this band and that band and that and i kind of went to him and said look I've, I've got this idea for a comic book i really want to score for it i don't think it's ever been done before um would you be interested and he said yeah sure so uh, uh, unfortunately it has been done before Oh, really? Several okay. times. Dozens of okay. times. Maybe not in the UK, but... Yeah. Uh, okay. Going to... Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I have to tell you, there's a uh, little comic book uh, called Halloween um, that was connected to a convention uh, for the 25th anniversary of the film. They had a score with yeah. it. It was drawn by a local oh, artist really? here in Worcester called Derek Rook. Um, Zombie, which was also drawn by Derek Rook, also had yeah. a, a Zombie, the comic book adaptation of the Lucio Fulci film, also had a score. Yeah, um, oh, really? yeah there's a lot of comic books. Mo mainly uh, uh, yeah. D DC Comics is uh, Dark Knights Death Metal and Dark Knights, yeah. the uh, multi-book crossover Batman event by Greg Capullo yeah. and Scott Snyder, had a huge score for every one of the different dark knight metal batman characters of the twisted versions of the justice league all had their own music i know i know they did the soundtracks where they got like metal bands to to put their things i never knew they did a score I, I, like i said over here we was a bit starved <laughs> for, for um for comics and things like that with with scores and that so I've, I've never heard of any of those so you you you've set me right I, I will take that on the chin completely. Um, what's the um, so there's a couple. There's only like there's only like two covers to this book, right? There's the VHS cover, and then there's what the, is the video nasties cover, the one where she's covered in blood. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that one. That one's got the nudity on. Yeah. So there's there's two covers um, for the for the book currently. Yeah. Can't decide which one's better, just because the <laughs> one's got the full cast, but then one's got like the naked chick covered in blood. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a naked cover for Vlada as well. It was done by a uh, Canadian, uh, Asian Canadian female artist named Veronica Kim. Um, I'm all out of copies of it now because the store bought all mine, but I have more coming uh, hopefully from the printer soon, so I can finish filling up one, filling one order, and then have uh, some backups just to have. Yeah, no, like I said, it, it, it was just I wanted something to to give an option to. And I, I thought, you know, what's more sort of 80s and video nasties than uh, a lady covered in blood being chased by the killer? 
what uh, what are some of the things you get when you uh, pre you know you basically are pre-ordering mm. it, uh, and what will happen if you don't hit your goal? Um, so the, the the few things you can get um, it starts at the really basic package where you get the PDF. Um, and then it builds up to the PDF and score, and then we start running into the book stuff. And the the, the main big packs include uh, A2 prints, lobby cards, two pin badges, a set of twelve trading cards. Um, I've got one tier, tier, which is my top tier, called the Final Girl, where you can get an original A4 sketch by myself um, of anything you want. Um, that one is limited to twenty. Uh, backers though if i don't hit the goal i'll be honest i haven't kind of thought that far ahead um but i definitely want to get it out there still so i maybe i i try something else or try and get the funds a different way to at least get the comic out i guess there's indiegogo it's, that's a way a lot of people go but it takes longer to get the money and indiegogo has a pretty bad reputation involving um just stuff that you have to look up online uh, oh, okay. about their site and the, what they uh, what they allow for projects versus what Kickstarter doesn't allow. I mean, Kickstarter oh. has a pretty open mind because there's a lot of projects on here that contain sex, violence, and nudity. Extreme mm -hmm. nudity. I mean, to the point that it's hardcore pornography that they're allowing on their site. Censored, of course. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's hardcore pornography that they're basically allowing to sell because they don't believe in censorship too much. But even they yeah. draw a line if it's basically like... Um, they don't want comic books or projects that deal in racism of any kind, whereas Indiegogo won't care. So oh, if your really? comic book is being put out by a racist or has some racist image or sexist images in it, that's fine. Indiegogo is not Black Lives Matter and Kickstarter is, that sort of thing. Jeez, that's crazy. That's mm. crazy. You'd think there'd be some sort of regulation to it, even if it was just for that. There is a regulation. <laughs> it's, it's why people don't quite understand the uh, the pro you know don't understand Kickstarter's you know issues. Again, they'll allow they'll allow sex, violence, and murder and 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 uh, swearing and stuff like that. But and it's like it's just weird what they're censoring versus you know what other uh, pay projects sites are not censoring. So. Yeah. Um, they've kicked people off of Kickstarter that have gone over to other places due to their politics. Like Ethan Van Scriver was on Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, and he's got a pretty bad reputation in the comic book industry right now, but he's still like making bank with his cyber frog over on Indiegogo. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I've seen him getting a, a, a bit of backlash on Twitter, but I, I try and stay away from that, that kind of side of it all. And just try and focus on like the positives. Right, but you can easily look yeah. this stuff up online. It's definitely oh, not. Good, yeah. yeah. I mean, you yeah, easily you can Google it, it yeah. and then be like, "Oh, yeah, wow, that's um, that, that story's right there." Um, yeah. Are you? Do you have like a publisher lined up for this thing as well to take it on after it's been successful? Uh, no, not all, not yet. And like I said, is this is at the moment completely creator owned i i don't have anything like that lined up it's it might just be something that i continue to put out myself until kind of someone comes knocking for it do you feel like there's a sequel following up for this one <laughs> you're the second person to ask me that this week <laughs> um do you know what i would like to um because we all know a, a good slasher movie always has a sequel would i do it straight away maybe not i ha i have another idea which i'd like to do first um and then i might return to the world of death school and edgar wilson but I, I have ideas where can people find you on social media um I'm, I'm on pretty much every platform i'm not gonna lie i i, I try and hook them all up because i'm on so many so i'm on instagram um under jason miller art i'm on twitter under jason miller underscore art and then if you want to find me on Facebook, it is uh, Jason Miller Horror Art. I wish you all the success, uh, Jason, with this project. I thought the art looked uh, very cool. I'm trying to remember what it reminds me of specifically. Um, what has some people said your artwork reminds them of? Um, I get uh, a few years back, I used to get that I'm sort of somewhere across between sort of Tony Moore and um, Towers from the Crypt. Um, but yeah, that that's really the the main one. I got that quoted by a gent called Gary Smart, who I worked with on Revenge of the Living Dead, um, which was a book by him and Don Kaffer. There's uh, there's an artist that worked on the Clive Barker book that I can't remember his name. 
okay. or the name of the Clive Barker book, but it was I remember it was collected in an omnibus by IDW a few years back. And by a few years back, I mean like nine years ago, that this kind of reminds me of. It was a series of shorts that are overlapping into one giant story at the end. And uh, I saw that, and I was like, I, I saw your art, and I was like, oh, it must be him, but it's not. But I'm okay. also trying, uh, no, I remember now. So it's just the cover artist. Who's the artist on Lock and Key? Oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, that guy. That's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really like that guy's artwork. <laughs> yeah, that's who um, your artwork reminds me of a little bit. Okay. I'll take that as a, a massive compliment, because I really like his stuff. So. Is it Jason <laughs> just... Charles Miller, just with a, with the... But this guy has like a long beard and a cowboy hat on. That's not you, right? <laughs> no, that's not me. Um, I've got a long, I've got a slightly long beard, <laughs> but it's not me. Okay, what's the uh, Twitter again? Uh, it's Jason Miller underscore Art. Oh, so no. Okay, so your middle initial is not there. No, no, it, no. There you are. Okay, so it's just a green logo that says Miller, like the sticker that says Horror. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, gotcha. anyway, you see that? That's me. Gotcha. Okay, I just found you. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for coming on the show to talk a little bit about uh, Death School, and I wish you all the luck with it. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for having me on the show.